You know, the shepherds, they get a lot of attention this time of year. And I mean, he's ever been to a Christmas play where um, um, little Johnny and, and Billy and, and whoever else is dressed up in this nice little outfit and a little mustache and beard and, and they got the little thing the, and, and, and then they, they're carry, um, um, and they have the little, the little sheep kids with them, right? Um, I don't know if y'all saw this um, posted this week about the, um, the nativity scene that went bad in the church where the little sheep grabbed baby Jesus and, um, and Mary didn't take kindly to that and they got in a fight and uh, mamas had to get up on the stage. Uh, it's pretty funny. Um, uh, I, I, I love, I love um, it's sort of like when you do a wedding and, you know, the bride and the groom, especially the bride, they want everything to be perfect. The same thing with a, with a, a Christmas play. Uh, the, the fun part, the memories are the things that don't go right. Those are the things that we talk about and we laugh about. Um, we get so um, high strung sometimes. And, um, and it's those moments that, that we remember. But the shepherds, um, we're going to talk about the shepherds today. And, and this is going to be really simple. If you can find Luke 2 in your Bible, that's, all, that's the only place we're going today. Luke chapter 2. We're going to talk about um, these shepherds who were out in the field watching, watching their flocks at night. You know, Bethlehem was a bustling city full of people. Um, people had come from, from all over because of the census and the taxes. And, and, and Bethlehem was full, so full Anybody ever been to a city where it was hard to find a hotel room? Um, it was so busy that they couldn't find an inn for, for Jesus. There was no room. Um, it wasn't that the innkeeper... So I've seen plays, uh, Christmas plays, where they portray the innkeeper as a mean guy. I don't think he was a mean guy. I don't think he had room. Um, he, he, he did find a place for him. Um, so I don't think he was a mean guy. He did what he could. Um, but... Um, Bethlehem, I, I don't get a sense that Bethlehem was a quiet place so much, but, but I think out in the middle of the fields at night by themselves, I think it was a quiet place. Anybody ever been in a, a outdoors at night in an in a, in a area away from the city where it's quiet and all you hear are the frogs and the crickets and, 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 and you can see it looks like the sky is just endless stars and you can see them all. Um, I kind of get the sense that that's what it was like. So if, 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 um, if the Silent Night um, song, uh, if that is what you picture it like, I do picture the, the, the shepherds in, a, in a, silent, a silent place away from the rest of the world at that moment when an angel showed up. Let's, um, let's pray as we get ready to get into this this morning. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that it's not just a, it's not just a history book, but it's alive. It, it is it is, it is full of your life, the life that you, um, that you breathed from the beginning into, into humanity. Uh, Father, I just pray that it would breathe life into us today and that we would not leave here the same. What a tragedy it is to have an opportunity to have an encounter with you and to walk away unchanged. The rich young ruler encountered you and he walked away sorrowful. But yet there were so many others that encountered you and their life was radically changed. Today, Father, I pray that we are changed. We're changed by your word as we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Let's pick up the story as, as, um, as the shepherds are being told about this wonderful news. Verse 8. Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. By the way, I don't think this is a naked baby angel. And by the way, I don't think they exist. I don't think they'd be freaked out by that. These are I, 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 the, 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 the descriptions of angels. Hollywood doesn't get it right. I'm just saying. You know, they, they, they don't get much right. Um, they don't even get historical movies right. But, but, uh, but I want you to understand that when this appeared to them, this wasn't some wimpy little long-haired 
you know, sissy angel. This was, a, this was something that scared them, that terrified them. It says that they were sore afraid. How many's ever been sore afraid before? I have been terrified before. There have been times in my life when something has happened and I have been terrified. There's been times in my life when I've had panic attacks. Anybody been there? Um, they're not fun. They don't make any sense. But in that moment, you, you, you know, um, like when you're driving down the road, I, when you're driving down the road and, and, um, and all of a sudden you see the red lights behind you, right? And your heart starts pumping, right? And then they pass you by. And then, you know, then, you're, then, then it's like this adrenaline rush <laughs> crashes, right? Um, these guys were afraid, they were afraid. And then some of you are like, I ain't scared of nothing. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, um, I had a friend one time who got, a, who got a tattoo that said, no fear. Years later, he, he, he covered up that tattoo with another one. And, I, and, and we asked him, why'd you cover up that tattoo? And he said, that was a lie. <laughs> why? Because, because we all struggle with it at times. There are times in our lives when we're hit by something, worry, and we worry and we stress over things and we're fearful. These guys... These guys are sore afraid when they see this angel. The Bible says that this angel stands before them and the glory of the Lord is shown, uh, is shown around them. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Say all. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe, not, not in a hospital room, not in the palace. This is the sign that you're going to know that you know that you know that you found the right baby. He's going to be in an unlikely place. He's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, and suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. This is, uh, I tell you what, God knows how to usher, how to usher in uh, the birth of his son. God knows how to announce it, doesn't he? This is some major fanfare here. He's the, uh, uh, how, many, how many dads, how many dads in this place, you've busted through the, the um, the doors from the delivery room to announce to everyone in the waiting room that the child is finally there, right? Right, and we, we, we celebrate that moment and everybody can't, no, no, nobody can wait to, you know, they, 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 they can't wait to see the little baby in, in between the glass and, 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 or through the glass. Was, I, I want you to understand, God was, God was happy. God was, was celebrating the birth of his son and he did it in big fashion. There is a host, everybody say host. There is a multitude, a multitude of heavenly hosts, a multitude of them. Uh, a, a multitude is a lot, okay? Um, that is a, that, that, that's a whole lot. That's how we would say it in Montgomery, Texas, a whole lot. We don't use the word multitude much. There's a whole lot of angels all of a sudden. This is a big, I want you to understand, this is a major event in the middle of nowhere on the side of a hill. God is announcing to these lowly shepherds, about the arrival of his son. So it was when the angels had gone from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Luke 2, look at verse 9 there. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. God is awesome. This, this scene was something supernatural. This is heaven coming to earth. The glory of the Lord was in this place, and, and, and it was tangible. God, listen, I, we, 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 
we have to, we have to be very careful that in our relationship with God, he is our heavenly father. Scripture says that we are, that we are friends of God. Scripture, scripture talks about relationship. But in that relationship with God, we must never forget he is awesome. He's incredible. John, who, who hung out with Jesus. John, who was the disciple that Jesus loved. He was, he was very close to Jesus. The encounter when he sees Jesus glorified in Revelation, when he sees him, John, you know, who would say, yo, gee, what's up? When they walk the earth together. He didn't do that then. He didn't do that that day. The scripture says he fell down like a dead man. Why? Because God is awesome. He's awesome. God is always awesome. He never loses his awesomeness. I remember growing up, my dad, my dad was awesome. Anybody in the house, your dad could beat up everybody else's dad? I mean, your dad could do anything. I mean, you were convinced that your dad was amazing. And then as you grow up, then that, that, that you, you begin to see the, human, the humanism or, the, or the, the humanity that's in your dad, and you realize he's just, he's just a man, and sometimes, sometimes that awesome, that, that, that awesome factor wears off as we, as we grow up. God is always awesome. He's always awesome. And any box we try to put him in where he, he loses some of that awesomeness, he won't get in that box because that's not who he is. God created the heavens and the earth. That's how awesome he is. He spoke into darkness and light came. He took a pile of dirt and he breathed life into it and it became a living, breathing man. God is awesome. God is, God is absolutely incredible and there's nothing impossible for this God. When, when you think about it, this was not God that showed up. Uh, at, this was just a messenger. This was just somebody sent from the throne room. This was just somebody sent from heaven, and it freaked out the shepherds. I'm wondering what would have happened had God himself shown up. I don't think they would have fallen down like a dead man. I think they would have, been, I think they would have fallen down dead. God is awesome. We should never lose sight of the fact that as, 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 as close as he is to us, he is always awesome. Some Isaiah saw the, saw the Lord and he fell down and he fell down on his face. God is, God is awesome. Number two, I, uh, I, I want you to see from this story, uh, verse 10, that this gift is for all people. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all. All people, I don't know about you, but I can relate to the guy that was talking. He sounded like he was from down the street, didn't he? I think the shepherds, I think most of us in this room can relate to shepherds. These shepherds were often despised in their culture. These were not the rich. These were not the insiders. These were not the politically powerful. These, these guys were on the outskirts, the fringes of the culture, despised, despised by many people, just lowly shepherds, not the educated. They're not the, they're not the smart ones, but Jesus, the, the, the birth of Jesus was announced to those people, to those the angel didn't show up at the palace to announce to royalty that a king was born. The angel showed up in a field where there were lowly shepherds watching their flocks. I get a sense that God did that because he wants us to understand that he is not just a king of, of just a few people or a select small group of people. He is king of all. He is, all, he is available to be all of ours. He, he, is, he, he is Lord of all. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know how you picture yourself. I don't, I don't know what you think about yourself, but I, I want you to understand that you are important to the God of the universe. You are important to him. God so loved the world, you are included in that picture. You, God so loved the world that he sent Jesus for you, for you, for you. 
I, 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 um, I love the term Emmanuel. It's God with us. Not just, not just, not just God with them. It's God with us. He's Emmanuel. He's God with the Baptist. He's Emmanuel. He's God with the Methodist. He's Emmanuel. He's, he's, God, he's God with the Pentecostals. He's Emmanuel. He's available to the Jews and the Gentiles. He's available to all of us. He's not just king of the Jews. He's king over all. He's king. <laughs> he's, he's, he's available. He is Lord. He is Emmanuel. He is God with the, the Green Bay Packer fans. I know that's hard to believe. He is God with the Pittsburgh Steeler fans. He is God. He is God. And hey, I know, I know it's going to be a stretch for some of you, but he is God. He is God with the Cowboy fans. There's a couple of you. There's a couple of you that, that believe that. And he's, he, he, he's even God. He's even God with the Redskin fans. Uh, yeah, we got one of those. He is He is God with us. That's a collective thing. God with us. He's he's here with us. I think it's awesome that that God saw us in our state and he didn't stay away. This brings me to my next point is God shows up in unlikely places. There are times when God does things, and and, and I know you've you've experienced this where you're scratching your head. You're like, what is he doing? What is God doing? And I, can't, I can imagine that there were some people who would have struggled uh, uh, um, to know that their king was born in a stable, with, surrounded by animals and animal stuff. You ever been to the zoo? It stinks. It stinks. Why? Because there's animal stuff, right? In the middle of a dirty place, God shows up. God showed, he didn't show up in the palace, he didn't, show, he didn't show up in some nice, clean, clean place. He showed up in a very, very messy place. I mean, I've, I've seen barns that are clean, but they still smell. You can't get it out, right? As long as there's horses in the stall, it's going to stink. This was not an empty stable. This was a place where there were animals kept. Anybody ever smell a wet dog? It, it, it just smells. Anything outside? You, my, my kids can walk outside for 10 minutes and walk in the house and they smell like outside. Everybody, anybody ever been camping? And you come home and everything smells like campfire. Everything. It's in your hair. It's, it's in everything. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. A manger. The king of the world was born in a stable. It's unlikely. It's it's not the place a king should be born. he's He's in a feeding trough for animals. Moses was, Moses was in the desert, but God met him in the desert. Why? Because God shows up in unlikely places. Elijah was, was seeking to hear from God, and, and he, he, he wasn't in, his voice wasn't in all the fanfare and all the things he thought he would find. It. God was in a still, small voice. Why? Because God shows up in unlikely places. <laughs> God showed up in the middle of a fiery furnace one time. You would think, why didn't you, why did, why, why did you let him go through the fire? I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to go through the fire. But God showed up in the middle of the fire. Why? Because God shows up in unlikely places. I, I don't know where you're at today, but I know that he's Emmanuel, he's God with you. I know that. I know that if you're on a mountaintop, he's there with you. If you're in a valley, he's there with you. If you're hooked on drugs, he's there. 
If you've got, if you've got, if you've got uh, other types of bondages, he's there. If you, if you can't seem to get free, he's, he's God with you. He's in it with you. If you're down this, this Christmas season, if you're struggling with depression, he's with you. He's in the middle of it with you. If you're going through something that seems like a fiery trial, he is Emmanuel. He's God with you. He's God in the victories and he's God in the defeats. He's God when the doctor gives you a bad report. He is in the middle of that with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He, is, he came and he's still here. He hasn't left. He didn't leave you alone. In fact, scripture says, I'm not going to leave you alone. When he told the disciples, I'm, I'm leaving, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to send my, I'm going to send, the Father's going to send the Holy Spirit who's going to walk through life with you. He's never going to leave you, nor forsake you. He's going to, he's going to, God adopted us. He adopted us into his family. And he doesn't kick us out because we get something wrong. We mess up or we fail. He's God with us always. I, I, um, I think it's interesting that these, um, these shepherds, these shepherds were told that he would be in a manger. I don't think the shepherds would have, would have fit in the palace. I think they would have been grossly out of place. I think, I think they would, have, would not have known royal protocol. How many know that if, if you went to the White House, there's protocol? There, there's, there's certain things you, 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 that's expected of you. you, you there, there's certain ways that you're supposed to act. And, 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 and you know as well as I do, there's, 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 there's certain protocol. When, when, when our dignitaries go overseas, there's protocol. That, that has, to, uh, has to be followed uh, 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 in order to be received and to be respectful and honorable. I get the sense that he showed up to shepherds to tell them because they wouldn't have been out of place in a, ma- in a, in a, in a stable. They wouldn't have been out of place there. They would have fit right in. In fact, you wouldn't have even known, you wouldn't even known that, they, that they hadn't taken a shower because they'd have just smelt like the stable. Here's the point I want to make with that is God came to us. We couldn't get to him. He became one of us in order to rescue us. He put on himself, he put on himself humanity. He, he, put, him, he put himself, he put on himself flesh and blood in order to rescue us because he comes to us. You know, I, 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 there have been a lot of times when, 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 um, when, um, when, and we've, we've had this message preached to us from the spirit of religion that tells us that we've got to get cleaned up before we can come to Jesus. No, he takes us just like we are. The good, the bad, and the ugly. He takes us. It does not matter. The Bible says he, he, those that come to him, he casts none of them away. None of them. All he wants is, all he wants is for you to come. Here's an invitation Here's an invitation to be a part of my family, to set up my table. Well, you don't know where I've been. That's irrelevant. Because we have, a, we have a God who sent his son to be born in a mess because you're a mess. And he had to come to clean up your mess. Because you can't, you can't clean it up. Stop trying. So if you're messy today, if you're messy, you are, you are a candidate for the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. You, you are in the right place. God takes you. You ever, you ever on the, on the, um, on the, the, the recess uh, at school or PE on the field and when they're choosing up teams, anybody ever be, was any of you ever one of those that was towards the end of the, the picking? Well, we'll take, we'll take Johnny, you know? It, it, it's like the worst thing in the world. I just want you to understand, God's not like that. He takes me and you 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 and you. He takes us all. He chooses you. Isn't that awesome that he chooses you? God shows up in places that we don't expect him. If you're in a season that feels like the wilderness, he's there. If you're in a season that feels like the desert, he's there. If life is good, he's there. 
If life stinks, he's there. It's okay for Christian to admit that life stinks. It's okay. It's okay. If you're exhausted, he's there. If you're sick, he's there. He's God with us. Verse 17, now, when they had seen him, they made widely known, widely known. They made widely known. Interesting way to say that. They made widely known. They, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. They made widely, they, they couldn't keep it in. I, listen, this is a bizarre experience. And we're talking about uneducated, lowly shepherds on the backside of a, 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 of a field, get in, get, have a God experience. Angel shows up, and, and then, a host of, uh, then, a, then a multitude of angels shows up, and then they go and they find this baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, just like the angel says, and they go and tell everybody that they, can, that they see about it. Why? Because they had a God encounter. They had a God moment. They had an encounter with a holy God. Something changed. Something shifted. They saw something supernatural, and it, and it had to be told. How often times do we keep that message inside of us for fear or whatever? I guarantee you, telling that story r- ran the risk of people thinking that they were loony. Oh, you saw an angel. Really? You saw an angel. Oh, not just one angel. We saw a multitude of angels. So many we couldn't count. Really? You saw, how many understand, how many understand that, that, that there are times when, when sharing what God has done in our life runs the risk of someone thinking you're crazy? They must have been pretty impressed by what they saw and what they heard that that risk was worth it. Let me say this, if God has supernaturally transformed and changed your life, the risk is worth it. The risk is worth it. Why? Because you're not talking about a theory. You're not talking about a God that you've heard about. You're talking about a God you have met. A God that did something inside of you. I, I don't know about you, but, but I am not the same person I was 20 years ago. Thank God Almighty. It is not because I read a whole bunch of self-help books. It's not because I worked really, really, really hard at getting to be a better person. It's because I've, I've met with Jesus. It's because he met with me. He meets with me. It's not not past tense. It's present tense. He meets with me and he changes me. He transforms me. I can't fix myself. I can't. There are things about me I can't fix. I have to lean hard on on, 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 on this person of Jesus. I have to lean hard on him and allow him to do the work that I cannot do myself. I am different because it's Christ in me. He's the hope of glory, not not him. I am not a self-made man. Left to myself, I am an utter failure and loser. But because of Christ in me, it's a game changer. That person person doesn't exist that existed 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I am, I am, I'm a new person. Anybody in this room? Can anybody relate? How many of you, if, if it were not for God, if it were not for a God encounter in your life, you would be dead or in jail? God's good. All the time. He's good. We are, we are, we are, we are testimonies of the goodness of God in this place. Um, verse 20. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told him. See, worship, worship is our response to an encounter 
with an awesome God. I, um, I don't worship God to get God to move. I worship God because he has moved. He's done something in me. My worship is a response to a God encounter. I'm not trying to get him to show up. I worship God. I praise God. I glorify God because he has shown up in my life. And that demands some type of response from me. Roy said, the word I loved when he said, or piddly, or piddly. That's a great, that's a Montgomery word right there, Roy. Uh, that's, that's great for Montgomery. Our, our tithes and our offerings are piddly compared to Calvary. They're piddly. You know, listen, I don't give to get God to do something. I, I don't. I give because God's given to me. It's one of the reasons why you, we, we, you, you'll know we don't, we don't pass a plate here. And it's not because this church doesn't have bills. We do. The nice, the nice lights and, 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 you know, and this, you know, comfortable seats and, and the AC and the heat, that, that all costs money. So it's not that we don't, we don't need money. We, we, we have offering boxes. We have offering boxes because we, we believe that it's an act of worship. It is us responding. It's a heart that's been changed by God and it's responding to the fact that God is so good to me. I can buy Christmas presents for my kids this year. Why? Because God's good to me. God's good to me. I have a car that runs. Why? Because God's good to me. I have a, I have a roof over my house because God's good to me. So my giving, my giving is a response. It's, it, I'm not trying to get God to be gooder. I, that's not why I give. I'm not, tr- I'm not trying to buy a blessing from God. I give because God has given me the ability to give. He gives seed to the sower. So I just keep sowing. I just keep sowing. Why? Because I trust that God, the, the same God that was good in the past is the same God that's good today and is going to be good tomorrow. I don't give, I don't give 10%. We, we passed that place a long time ago. We're not, I always say, this, we're not tither and people get really uncomfortable. We're not tithers. We passed that a long time ago. We ain't going back, we ain't going back to just plucking down a little bit. God's been so good to me. I know that some of us, we, we come from backgrounds where, where expressions of worship. And, and, you know, I read a book years ago called Why Men Hate to Go to Church. And, 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 I, and, and some of it resonated with me. I was like, I get that. I, I, I understand that. And, and so some of us, we come from different backgrounds. And so, so being boisterous and, 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 and emotional during worship, some of us struggle with that. I don't know what it looked like when the shepherds got to the manger. We, we don't see that. We, we don't get that picture. I know that there were wise men that came from afar prepared to worship the new king who was born. I, I know that. They came from a long way with their gifts and they were totally prepared to worship. What I do know is when they saw him, the shepherds left praising and glorifying God. Why? Because they had met with him. So I, I don't know where you're at today and I don't know your background and I'm not asking you to sh- hang from the chandeliers and, 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 and lay prost- prostrate on the, on, on the floor. I'm not, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you this morning, if God has done something in your life, if you've had an encounter with God at some point in your life where you know that you know that you know that Emmanuel, God is with me. I'm asking you just for a few moments. You, you may not know who this is, but her, her, her name is Stacy. And she's just gonna, she's just gonna take a few moments. And as she, as she, as she worships the Lord, I wanna, I wanna challenge you right now. You can stand, you can sit, you can kneel, you can bow. Just, you can lift your hands. You can just close your eyes and just express your heart to the Lord. 
But I want you to imagine yourselves having an encounter with a newborn savior of the world who came to save you. What would your response be? How would you respond in that moment? So let's just take a few moments together collectively to respond to the goodness and the awesomeness of the God that we serve. Amen?
This week can get pretty crazy. Um, I know our life has been crazy the last few weeks. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you this week. Don't get so caught up in all the hoopla. Just remember it's about God with us. Slow down. Slow down. It's God with us. Let's respond. Let's respond to this season. Let's respond to this season with the reality that God is with us. In our mess, in our stuff, and life's challenges, he's with us. Take time out this week. And if, if you need to, you know, if you need to, to turn on some worship music to help you, respond in worship this week to the goodness of God that's come to your house. Don't rush through the ripping through the presence that we forget about what it's all about. It's about him. It's about him. It's about him. You buy your presence, do your stuff, but don't forget it's about him. And then the other response, the other response to the encounter with God is you can't keep it quiet. You can't keep it quiet. There are people in your life that need to know there is hope and you have it. You have it. The Savior has come. He is here to rescue humanity. There are people that need to know him. Open up your mouth and tell widely, tell widely about this God that you have met and who has transformed your life. Even if you, listen, we're all in, we're all in process. We're all at different mile markers. But listen, if God's done something in your life, tell it widely. Tell it widely. Amen. And that's Roy to come and dismiss us this morning.